Good day, Lionhearts. It's your old pal, Jordan the Lion. How are you all doing today? I hope you said well. Today, as you can see, we are in North Carolina and we are gonna do a vlog that I've wanted to do for quite a while. This should be a blast. This is a real place that we knew as a fictitious place starting in 1960. Television show, The Andy Griffith Show, came on the air and it's never been off the air since. Today, we are going to the real Mayberry and today I'm wearing a different pair of sunglasses. These are for Ryan Butler. Ryan, I hope you're an Andy Griffith fan and uh, at the end I'll send these to you. Hope you guys all enjoy this. Let's go to Mount Airy. Days with Jordan the Lion begins now. All right, there's the first sign that we have made it or at least getting close. The Mayberry Motor Inn, hometown of Andy Griffith. And you know what's cool? They actually have a room dedicated to Aunt B inside there. So if you want your uh, your bean pie or whatever, that's your place. Mayberry Motor in. Now let's head into Mount Airy. All right, welcome to Mayberry. I mean, Mount Airy. Kind of funny how they sound the same, huh? All right, looks like we're driving into the old town right up here. Gonna go meet the man who met the man who met Andy Griffith. Andy's neighborhood. Well, we definitely came to the right place. There's Barney's squad car <laughs> and another squad car and Andy's home. Take a look at that. That's actually an Airbnb. It was booked up for the entire month when I was here. This was where Andy Griffith grew up in this little town of Mount Airy. He was only child his dad worked in a furniture factory and at the time this was considered a lower income part of town so he grew up without a TV or radio his friend said and they would just go out play in the streets play kick the can make up games and when Andy grew up he ended up playing music and going off to University of North Carolina and played in the band and said when he was at UNC watching those football games in the band, it's where he came up with his idea of wanting to be a comedian and came up with the bit that would end up making him pretty famous. As Andy was watching the football game, he thought, how funny would that be if you had kind of like a, a backwoods type North Carolina person like him or, you know, someone calling a football game. And he ended up getting a deal after he went out and performed that skit ended up getting a deal to make a record of that and it sold a million copies there's andy's family swing so he ended up going off and doing the stage version of no time for sergeants and that's when he was doing stage that's when he ended up meeting don knotts and he ended up getting the call to go make a movie he did a face of the crowd and he was doing the movie um, for No Time for Sergeants when the producer, Sheldon Leonard, saw him in that and called him and said, hey, I wanna put you on the Danny Thomas show, one episode, and we want you to be this kind of backwoods hick sheriff, but we want you to be like the kind of sheriff that, you know, was also the mayor and you know also did everything in town and so that was kind of where andy's career got started on television was the danny thomas show his rehearsals for that would actually end up getting him the andy griffith show so it was actually at the rehearsals for that episode that the sponsor saw andy griffith and the episode was going to be called danny thomas meets andy griffith they liked andy so much that they told him hey we want to do a spin-off from the Danny Thomas show just for you. And in that episode, Opie was playing his son, Aunt B was in the episode, and so both of them got cast to be on the Andy Griffith show. But part of the deal was that Andy was pretty smart. 
He knew really there was no show without him, so he insisted on getting 25% ownership of the show, which he got. Danny Thomas had also 25%, and that also gave Andy the right to call some of the shots. He wanted creative control, and so when they were deciding on what kind of show they wanted to do, they wanted to do a show on his life. So all the places that we're gonna go today would eventually be seen on the Andy Griffith Show, and when the show debuted, it was an instant hit, and it was so popular that people started writing in and asking where was Mayberry and where and when can I come visit? So at some point we'll come back here, stay in the house, and uh, we'll take one of those squad car tours. But today we're just going to go take a tour of the town and go see Floyd's Barber Shop, the, the old courthouse. We're going to go see Wally's service station and they even have an Andy Griffith Museum. See, they even have him living here when the show was going on because the show started in 1960. So that probably means his folks were still living here and his parents ended up making little slight appearances in the background of some of the episodes of Andy Griffith's show. One of my favorite parts of the Andy Griffith show would be whenever they were in the courthouse because I loved Barney. So let's go over to the courthouse first and talk about how Don Knotts got on the show. It's right up here because I see the squad car. Well, thanks for the tip, Goober. So here we are, a replica of the Mayberry Courthouse. I can't wait to see this. So how did Don Knotts become involved? He asked. <laughs> he saw the pilot episode, called Andy Griffith and said, Andy, don't you think it'd be uh, kind of cool to have a, well, he didn't say cool, but don't you think it'd be a good idea to have a deputy? Andy thought it was a great idea and Don Knotts then became the comedy relief for the show, and Andy became the straight man. And who can forget Floyd the Barber? Opie, Andy, Barney, Otis, all the memorable characters here, Aunt B, Goober, Ernest T. Bass, who eventually became one of the directors of the show. And then it says Thelma Lou, Miss Crump, Emmett, and the Darlings. So let's go on in. All right, so once you walk in, you've got Andy's desk right over here. You can actually sit behind the old classic telephone that he used to call Sarah on. This place is just a dead ringer. That's the real six-man Mount Airy police force. And there's some of Aunt B's kerosene cucumbers. When she made those horrible pickles that nobody liked. <laughs> All right. And then, of course, the, the gun rack. And then the jail. Or you'd always see Otis letting himself in and out. They've even got the key. <laughs> right there. Otis's jail cell has a TV and a bed. <laughs> Picture <of> Otis. <laughs> Gotta love it. <laughs> a couple of chairs, real nice and comfy. We're inside the cell, and there's the window. So when you are locked in here, <laughs> lock himself in and just reach out and grab the key. And right here they have a brick that is dedicated to Ernest E. Bass, <laughs> when he would always throw bricks and rocks through the windows. And then here's the other cell. Very cool experience. You can actually come in and just <laughs> be inside the Mayberry Courthouse. And you just can't forget Barney and his one bullet in that shirt pocket either <laughs> when you look in here. Right beside the courthouse, not only do they have the old cars and the Darlin's truck over here, they have a Wally service station right next to it. Let's go check that out. I think all those people are waiting to take tours with the squad car. Let's go check out Wally's. This place was great. This is where we got to meet 
Gomer and Goober. And actually, when they first were doing casting for Gomer Pyle, they hired Goober, George Lindsay. He was the first person they gave the role to, and then Andy Griffith was in Santa Monica and saw Jim Neighbors doing a comedy routine where he talked real low, and then did the Gomer voice, and he liked it and gave Jim Neighbors the part. So they eventually wrote George Lindsay in as Goober, and George said, when I first got the part, I was having trouble coming up with kind of a character for it, and I went and told Andy, I said, I'm not really sure where to go with this character. And Andy said, Goober's the kind of guy that would walk into a restaurant and talk about how good the salt was. And that's all George Lindsay had to go on. And if you need any surface, oil changes 450. And it looks like the service station's open, so I want to go in and take a look. This place is great. You get photos of just about everybody in the cast. All kinds of stuff. Coasters, coffee mugs. Hey, Miss Jean, what's happening? Hi, it's the kids. Our old friends. Yes, Bernard P. Fife. Great. Thank you, Bernard. Thank you. Drinking buddies. <laughs> It's all made out of bottle tops. These are all magnets. Here you can even buy one of Barney's bullets or the squad car license plate. Here they even have Mayberry badges, Sheriff badges, and Goober hats. That was one of my grandma's favorite sayings from this show. Surprise, surprise, surprise! There's Wally's towing truck. Look what's over here. And if you walk out back of the Wally service station, you can see the Bee Darlin' farm that they've created. Little shack. I love it. Take note, towns looking for tourism. This is how you do it. Stuff like this. Now we're gonna head on down the road and see a few more places that I think you'll recognize. So let's hop in my squad car and head down that way. Aunt Bee's Kitchen. Here we've got Opie's Candy Shop. And right next to it is Floyd's Barber Shop. Unfortunately, it is closed right now, and I believe they only do barber appointments on Saturday. But gotta love it. That was one of the highlights of the show, too. Stuttering, stammering Floyd. And sadly, what happened to him was, uh, I think like on the third season, he ended up having a stroke and had the unfortunate situation where he couldn't stand up to film so that's why a lot of the times you'd see him sitting in his chair off here to the side right over there but they uh they eventually when they needed to do shots of him cutting andy's hair they put a stool behind there that he could sit on that made him look like he was standing and there he is floyd pretty cool to see but let me show you what's right next to it here so just to the left of Floyd's is the Snappy Lunch Counter, home of the pork chop sandwich. Unfortunately, they're closed already too. I believe they close at one. They get really, really busy. I saw online they said that the uh, line is usually coming out the door. We'll eat here when we spend the night at Andy's house in the future. Looks pretty small in there, but I think they have a connecting room a little bit more seating on the other side of Floyd's. Let me go check for you. Yep, they sure do. There's a connecting dining room in here. Oh yeah, that looks awesome. Let's see, they have all kinds of Andy Griffith memorabilia in here. And that's what you want when you come here. Pork chop sandwich. And over here they have a 
mural to the vocal group, the Easter Brothers from Mount Airy. And apparently one of the Easter Brothers owns the music shop here. James Easter. That's where Andy would have got his guitar strings. Kind of a fun photo op over there they found. Mural of Barney and Andy together. I love that almost everything in town, all the businesses are named after something Andy Griffith. Like Barney's Cafe, home of the Barney Burger. This is kind of fun, I just walked past this and saw the giraffe which caught my eye and then it also caught my eye that they had the looking for the Home Alone bandits, the wet bandits. So there's another place I want to show you down here. Unfortunately, it's closed. I was kind of hoping to eat here, but another Andy Griffith show connection, the loaded goat, the time the <laughs> goat ate the dynamite. But you do have to respect, they've got this in their window, a Johnny Cash, Andy Griffith movie poster. Thank you all for watching. We're gonna call it a day. Have a great night and goodbye.